I'm trying something new with the exhaust. I have the TPC racing bypass pipe for the side mufflers on the car now, uh, but I score a set of titanium side bypass pipes so these do not have the uh, valve in the upper chamber pipes like the tpc racing ones do you know they were just a couple hundred bucks so i couldn't resist i'm gonna try them out should be super easy to swap uh, if i don't like them i'll just swap them back they're super light less than one pound per pipe I thought it was going to be an easy swap, but it is not because they won't go over the um, stock flanges. I've been grinding all morning using a die grinder, but uh, really getting nowhere. I, you know, right now they wouldn't even fit over it. This flange is unmodified. I was grinding on the opposite side. So here, let me show you here. As you can see, I spent some time trying to grind them evenly. Got the pipe to slide in three quarter way, but still not going through. So I figure at this point, I should just stop and set it up on a uh, vertical mill. And I took the time to index it. So when I'm spinning, this cutter here is, uh, as close as possible to center. So I'm gonna just cut off a little bit at a time until the pipe fits over. I stopped the operation just to see how much we're taking off here on the first pass. So it looks to be about half a millimeter. And uh, I think the second pass is gonna be another half a millimeter. Just completed the first pass. So as you can see here, this has been machined. This has not. So right now, this fits in there pretty snug. So it needs one more pass. Whereas before with the other one, there's just no way. For the last cut, I'm gonna go for three thousandths of an inch. There, that's it, three thousand. Okay. It's a bit of a snug fit. It does go through, but um, there's no room for expansion. So I'm gonna give it another pass. ready to be installed. You can tell by the freshly machined surface right here. Let's see if I do this with one hand. Yep, goes on with one hand, glides nicely. Just like the uh, factory one, you see how loose fitting the factory one is? So yeah, these are now just as loose fitting. Oh, I put this on backwards, it should be like this. The fact that I can do this with one hand and it has the same amount of play here as the factory one, I think that uh, did a pretty good job. Ready to go on the car. Oh yeah, I forgot. Since this pipe is bigger, I do have to tap the uh, gasket on it with a hammer. It's going to expand enough. Okay, so I try cutting the ID of this to be bigger, but there's no way. Because once I got through the first layer, this is just all stainless steel wire, as you can see here. So these gaskets are really tough, much tougher than they look from the outside. So what I did was, good thing I have a spare gasket. I just cut a slit here to go over. As you can tell how much bigger this pipe actually is by this split, the gap here. I'm not worried about the exhaust gas leak because I think once you put the uh, flange on, this gasket more or less just 
keeps the pipe from rattling inside a muffler. And just being a nerd here, if I wanted to find out the difference in diameter between this pipe and a stock pipe, I would take this gap, the distance of this gap, you know, both of these gaps should be the same, and uh, divided by pi, which is 3.14. Um, so yeah, that should theoretically give me the diameter of this versus the stock. Let's see if the math works out. The factory pipe measures, they rounded off to 62 millimeters. And the Sixty-four and a half millimeters. So we have a uh, difference of approximately two millimeters. And now we're going to measure the gap. Okay, the gap measures six point five. Here it is. The titanium pipes are now installed. It took a bit longer than I thought. I originally thought it would take 30 minutes, but it ended up taking three and a half hours because I have to machine these flanges to fit. Some people take these brackets off when they do the uh, side deletes. I prefer to keep them on. One, it provides a secure place to tie this uh, vacuum tube to. I capped it. Uh, but you do save about a quarter of a pound by removing them on both sides. But just in case I don't like the sound, I'm gonna go back to the TPC racing pipes with the valves. I'm gonna fire it up and let it warm up, see if there are any leaks, and then drive it around for a week or so to see if I like these or go back to the TPC pipes. I'm cruising along at 60 miles per hour just to the traffic and in seventh gear, In summary from this little experiment, I find myself having to prioritize between weight reduction and personal driving enjoyment in the way of sound. At wide open throttle, both the valve and the non-valve side muffler bypass pipe sound the same. Where the huge difference is for me is the drone and the sound volume during cruising. Since I sold my truck and trailer for the down payment on this RS, I have to drive this car five hours to go to racetracks like Watkins Glen and VIR. So having a pleasant highway cruising experience is a higher priority for me than further weight reduction. I'm all for weight reduction, but I feel that for my usage, the bulk of the weight reduction is already achieved by the TPC valve side muffler bypass pipe. Any further reduction becomes a compromise for me. Every driver have their own priorities and personal preferences. This just happens to be mine. Thanks for watching.